whenever I, whenever I speak to founders and um, hear other founders talk about their journeys, there's always a, an element of luck and timing in addition to just the street smarts and that kind of the entrepreneurial spirit to keep going and to keep driving and to find out the, the answers and the solutions that your clients and your partners need. What happened along the way for you that you could kind of look back on now and say, okay, that man, that was a great turning point. That was a great, you know, hire that we had. What were those, what were a few of those different moments for you over the last, let's say 10 years? So uh, the first one was Lauren. I, this would not be where it was today. That was the very first one. So partnership was one. The second one was, um, trial and error. Like you said, a lot of it was luck. Everyone said, don't hire friends and family. I've had the most success hiring friends and family. Like my sister worked for us for 10 years, left for three years. She just came back two weeks ago. I am like so excited to have her, you know? So to me, that was another, and I can't say that that was like, I'm so intuitive that I knew that that was going to work. It just did. And it was how I live life. So I was like, well, if I love these people, I love work. I'm who I am at work and I am at home. It's not going to, there's going to be bumps that worked out getting, you know, falling on my butt a few times. I had some clients that were so unaligned and so awful. And I was so willing to say yes, because I wanted the revenue and the growth. And then they fired me when they got a new VP of marketing after two years of basically just, mm. I mean, getting beat up by them and thinking to myself, I do not want, you know, this is not how I want to do business. So it was a lot of that. Um, I think there was also the opportunity. I saw speakers in the industry getting a big reach. So we talk personal brand now. There was no LinkedIn at the time. You would get in a plane and go and speak. And so I said, well, I could do that. I could do it for free. That's my competitive advantage. They don't know that, you know, I'm not really good at this point, but I know marketing. So I wrote to every association and said, I'll come for free. I paid for my travel and I started an email list. I had no idea that that was going to be such a huge thing. So I started an email list, you know, 13 years ago, and it has grown into thousands and thousands now that get my emails on a weekly basis. So those were things that I didn't know. Like I was following again, an online footprint for an industry that was not doing that model. And it was, it, it worked like it was forging the way to do that. So like you said, it was a lot of trial and error. A few of those speaking events kind of just like exploded my reach and people started being like, Barbara marketing, Barbara marketing. Yeah. And it became like, my name became synonymous. So the word of mouth became our number one driver and is still our number one driver of business, which I had no idea um, at the time that I was building a personal brand to support a company brand. Mm -hmm.